welcome to another installment of Vintage Migo. You know, I, I really enjoy making these because I often get to set up and play with items that have been sitting unloved for years. And this week it's something that deserves a lot of love. The Comic Action Heroes Fortress of Solitude playset. This set was introduced in 1976, and the entire purpose of the Comic Action Heroes was for Mego to create more interesting and detailed environments for the superhero characters. At this reduced scale, they could do things not fiscally possible for the 8-inch World's Greatest Superhero characters. Comic Action Heroes do appear a bit crude when compared to action figure lines of the late 1970s. But it's important to note that they were some of the first three and three quarter inch figure lines out on the market. Following Fisher Price's Amazing Adventure People line that debuted in 1975, many toy makers jumped on the three and three quarter inch explosion that year to follow. Uh, Mattel launched the Heroes in Action and Space 1999 three and three quarter sets. Tonka did their own version of the Adventure People called the Play People, and Mego launched the Comic Action Heroes. They sold the figures on cards or in these play sets, and three play sets were released in 1976. Wonder Woman had a set that included the Invisible Jet and a Collapsing Tower. Batman had his Batmobile and an exploding bridge. And Superman had the Fortress of Solitude. The Marvel characters got something called the Mangler, and, and I'll get into that in another video as it's one of my favorite toys. All of the packaging for this wave was done by Neil Adams Continuity Studios, and it's rightly gorgeous. All of the play sets were tied together with something called the Comic Activator. This is a cartoony plunger and dynamite system that sadly never really seems to work anymore. Mego offered the Comic Activator separately on their order forms, but it didn't make it to market. The only place that may have gotten it on its own is Germany, but we've never seen one in the actual package. The first thing I want to say about this incredible set is that it really isn't the Fortress of Solitude at all, but the Hall of Justice based on the Super Friend cartoon as designed by the amazing Alex Toth. So why didn't Mego just call it the Hall of Justice? Because in 1976 they made a Hall of Justice playset for the world's greatest superhero line, also with gorgeous Neil Adams artwork, and I guess they just didn't want confusion in the marketplace. This is, without a doubt, one of the nicest playsets Mego ever made, and there are a few different variations of it. Mego actually made two different versions of this set. There is noticeable differences in the wall components. Even the levers on the later version actually move as opposed to the hard fixed levers in the original version. This is important to notice if you're ever trying to piece the set together using parts. These parts do not fit together. They have different locking systems. Even the sticker graphics are different on the two different versions, just mildly. I can't tell you which version or variation is rarer. I can only tell you I prefer the later version. It's got nicer detail and it just kind of looks better than the original. The other variation is the furniture itself. Sometimes you get red chairs, other times you get white. I guess it depends on what is available at the time. I don't know what's rarer or what isn't. One of the funnier Easter eggs in the set is the screen features an image of Superman standing with Hawkeye, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch of the Avengers. A keen-eyed Mego Museum member pointed out to me that this is because someone in the Mego Art Department traced Superman over Captain America from an Avengers cover. It's hard to believe in this age of geek culture that there was a time when adults couldn't discern DC from Marvel, but this is what happened. Also, this got approved by DC Licensing. The point of this set is that the Penguin, one of the two DC villains in the Comic Action Heroes line, is trying to break into the Fortress of Solitude with the Comic Activator. 
He destroys the vault door, totally surprising Superman, who I assume beats him up and takes him to jail. I mean, he's Superman. The Fortress playset was released in three countries, the United States and Canada and the UK, where Grand Toys and Denny Fisher released it respectively. The Denny Fisher and Grand Toys boxes are much smaller than the U.S. box, and of course, they always seem to be the second version of the set. I personally didn't have this set as a kid, but my best friend growing up did, and I totally envied him. Although I do remember staring at that picture of Superman with the Avengers and going, what is that? This toy became one of the first items I tracked down when I was collecting as a teenager. An interesting story. I ended up selling it in college and all my comic action heroes so I could attend Chiller Theater that year. I sold it to a collector by the name of Lou, and because of his $220 purchase, I was able to travel to New Jersey, and I bought a bunch of stuff, and through a series of circumstances, some of that stuff introduced me to the woman that would later become my wife. About 20 years later, I'm on the Mega Museum, and I discovered that same Lou was a guy I knew on there. And when I told him the story, he sent me the remaining piece from that collection, which is this Superman here. Um, Lou passed away unexpectedly last year, and I'll forever be reminded of what a kind soul he was. And this Superman, I will never sell him. I really appreciated him, and I miss him. In 1979, the Fortress of Solitude again appeared in the Mego catalog, this time colored white and deckled with images from the Superman movie, including Marlon Brando's head as Jor-El. This was uh, meant to be a pocket superheroes tie-in. They also tried to sell the collapsing tower and uh, exploding bridge sets combined in a Superman the movie tie-in, which was actually kind of clever. Buyers weren't interested in the sets, and they were never produced. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts and feedback on this playset and anything you want to talk about Mego in our Facebook group, Mego Mania. You can hit us up at Twitter, at Mego Museum. Of course, we have a forum on our website, MegoMuseum.com. And, you know, in these YouTube comment sections, I'm always welcome to hear it, and I really appreciate the feedback and kind words. Let me know what you think. Have a great one. See you next week.